You know, I think that we must remain focused on ensuring that we can transfer skills to, to African young people. It's fundamentally important. And what the Minds Youth Dialogue does is it brings together people from across the continent. I don't know of any other dialogue, and I, I'm, I'm privileged to attend some of them, that has almost 100% attendance of countries. That's what makes it unique. So the key issue is to use this phenomenal opportunity to get people talking, uh, to get them considering their own positions in the political space within their countries, but what the forum does is to allow for persuasion of how to take forward issues. Hello, Judy Sikuza from South Africa. Hello, Adriana Lai from Equatoria Guinea. First of all, you're not that young. I think enough of young as a label, it does not serve you well. So age is a big thing in Africa. If you go to a global conference, you will not hear young as a you know, Mark Zuckerberg, you will not hear him saying, oh, I'm so young. How old was he when he founded Facebook? It's not about age. So who is a leader? It's from within. A 16-year-old could lead. It's really from within. So there are responsibilities of leaders and there are responsibilities of followers. So if followers have bad leaders, Move them out of the way because everybody is a leader. Rwanda! How can we be able to build our nations individually and yet also build the African nation as a whole? Uh, ethnic, uh, maybe the, the tribes and all that is what makes Africa called the beautiful Africa. So, what we should look on is how we can use these uh, different tribes to, to create a strength that will unite people as a country because what we have left is more so like in Kenya for politicians to use that power of tribe to separate and uh, get to power. No one's going to magically create a pan-African society that we want. It's about us actually saying, no, I've now got colleagues that I'm engaging with from different parts of the continent. We've had rigorous debates, we've discussed through such platforms and, and others similar to it, because that's how it happens. And so when you're now making a decision that's around your own nation, you've got a pan-Africanist perspective around it. And I think for us, that's what we're trying to inculcate in our students. And the vulnerable in, in Africa are young people, and they are women. Pechuku from Nigeria. Victoria from Tanzania. <laughs> there is a sort of detachment between the government and the youth, especially in, in more low-income low areas. So we're trying to bridge that gap by giving them awareness, by building their capacity to understand that they are the government. And if we target the vulnerable, I think we will be able to effect change. And it's by by involving young people in this process themselves because they understand the world a little bit better. Just a few observations to set us off this morning. I asked you already how many of you have been to Tanzania before and the large majority are your, is your first time here. Part of the reason why we do this the way we do it, with lots of difficulty, as you can imagine, in terms of travel within our continent, visa issues, connectivity issues, schedules of airlines. We do it deliberately because we believe that Africans, especially young Africans like yourselves, need to get to know your continent. So with all of the difficulties, our reason for doing this is that you are the future leaders of tomorrow. You cannot solve problems that you theorize about. You have to live through them in order to understand you need to solve these issues. But people who live in Southern Africa today may have partly migrated. In fact, it has been proven. Some moved from what is today TRC. Donc je disais que c'était juste un amendement par rapport à ce qui avait été dit auparavant euh, par rapport au rôle des jeunes. Bon, le rôle que nous avons, je crois qu'on va arrêter de parler de la généralité être beaucoup plus spécifique parce qu'en fait le plus grand problème 
Bon, quand je parle de la spécificité, je commence par Chemon, en Guinée-Conakry. Euh, nous voulons tout faire en même temps, surtout quand on parle d'un jeune leader. Vous voyez aujourd'hui, il veut travailler dans le social, demain dans l'économie, demain dans la politique. Non, je crois que ça ne marche pas. Ce qui peut marcher et qui est un défi pour nous, c'est qu'on se spécialise dans ce que nous sommes en train de faire. De ne pas penser qu'on peut tout faire à la fois, ça c'est le premier. Et deuxièmement, c'est le fait que nous soyons sceptiques. If you get, if you get 40 or 41, then 40. You can get 50? You can get 50. Our, the person who presented nation building brought something to light that really stuck with me. The difference between national, nation building and uh, state building. Building a national identity and a functioning state are two different things. Uh, from the experience of Rwanda, very many people agree with what Kagame is doing as far as state building is concerned. Building a, state, a functioning state where you hold leaders accountable. They agree with him on that note. But some don't agree with him with the way he's doing national, I mean nation building. You will find people appointed to the civil service, posted to the finance ministry, in a unit dealing with macroeconomic policy with a higher national diploma in archaeology. I am 65 this month. I, I am not sure whether I'm ready yet to run a country. In spite of all my experience, I don't know. But a lot of you think you are, and I don't think you are. And we would like to give you the opportunity of investing in getting yourself ready. Hello, my name is Sisi I'm from Equatorial Guinea. Hello, my name is Rami Yassin, I'm from Sudan. Many countries in Africa, at least 10, have presidents that have ruled for more than 20 years. And the interrogation was, should we have term limits or not? Term limits could be good in one perspective because it helps new people to come. It gives hope to us, the young people, that one day we too could get to power. Institutions, they're absolutely crucial to any society, of course. Um, when you have strong institutions, uh, when there's political instability, elections, uh, ideally you'd like to have a bureaucracy that's just steadily plugs along is, and is unaffected by the political changes. So it's a, it's a great force in terms of uh, ensuring stability, which of course is excellent for business business loves stability in, in a country. The question that comes in our mind is, is that do we have a real, our own institutions in Africa? The uh, answer it will be uh, no, because we, we all know the multinational companies in Africa and how they work and how uh, they take our opportunities that we can create our own institutions. So if we create our own institutions, the African countries can give a chance to the fresh youth, whatever institution it is, the leadership, entrepreneurship, higher education, and all the... One more thing about institutions. I want to base on the public sector. Young people, we do not want to be patriotic to our countries. Let us not lie to ourselves. We run to the private institutions because they have better paying salaries. I think that um, there should be more of such initiatives. I think that this is like a flagship. It's like, uh, how can I call this? It's like a new initiative that is being brought. You don't see many youth forums. They're either political, they're either, they're d driven in, in a particular direction. But this is like an open space for young people to just let go and discuss matters that concern their nations, that concern their futures. So we need more innovations as such because this is like a really beautiful platform. What you need to do in the political space is not something that you're going to be taught in any school or university. Yes, you can 
interact with others and an opportunity like the Youth Dialogue is such an opportunity. That's a learning experience. Yes, you will learn about leadership uh, from what other people have done and are doing. But what's very important is that you will do the most of your learning by taking responsibility. I just have two things to say. I love the statement, in Africa we talk too much, and that's true. For the past 50 years, Africa is the future. Africa is the future. When do we become the present? I think that's my first one. And my second, my second point is, I read through the paper, and at some point, the writer said, we need to create, to enhance nation building in the country. You need to connect all the people through roads or something to the capital to enhance nation building. We don't have the money, at least for now, to connect everybody to the capital using roads. Why don't we use IT? I mean, 50% of our youths on Facebook every day. And my point is, the easiest, simplest, cheapest way of creating this ideal of the African nation is IT. Because look at 48 of us, 48 countries. We will go back to our countries and we can easily stay in contact using IT. I think that this opportunity is a great opportunity, mainly because I'm learning from several experiences from different countries. I really find here interesting young people that they brought so very different experience that they are leading with like leadership, how they are helping their country, how they are helping their people in order to understand their contest. For instance, today we are discussing deeply the limit time of the president, you see, and these are very important issues to the development of Africa. Et je pense, le point qui m'a le plus marqué, the point that struck me the most was, we talk too much in Africa, now we need to act. Nous parlons trop en Afrique, maintenant c'est le temps d'agir. Je pense, voilà un résumé d'hier. Merci beaucoup.